Hey hello friends welcome to my channel now see about B-Type B-Twin engine. Most B-Twin engines have a single crank pin, which is shared by both connecting rods. The connecting rods may sit side by side with offset cylinders, or they may be fork and blade items with cylinders in the same plane without an offset. Some notable exceptions include the Moto Goodsy 500 cubic centimeters that Stanley Woods rode to win the 1935 Isle of Man TT, the 1983 Honda Shadow 750, claimed as being the first perfectly balanced narrow angle B-twin by using an offset dual pin crankshaft, and the 1987 Suzuki VX 800, 45 degrees V angle with 45 degrees crank pin offset in USA and 75 degrees crank pin offset for the rest of the world. Generally, a two-cylinder engine with the cylinders arranged at any angle greater than 0 degrees and less than 180 degrees may be classified as a V-twin, although an angle that approaches 0 is not practical. Despite Ducati referring to its 90-degree twin-cylinder engine as an L-twin with the front cylinder nearly horizontal and the rear cylinder almost vertical, there is no technical distinction between V-twin and L-twin engines. Assuming correct counterweighting, a 90-degree V-twin will achieve perfect primary balance however, the 90-degree layout will produce an uneven firing interval, with the second cylinder firing 270 degrees of crankshaft rotation after the first cylinder, followed by 450 degrees of rotation before the first cylinder again fires. A V-twin with an angle of less than 90 degree cannot achieve perfect primary balance unless offset crank pins, a balance shaft, or both are employed to counteract reciprocating forces however, the firing interval will not be as uneven as with the 90 degree layup. Transverse Crankshaft Mounting The engine can be mounted in transverse crankshaft position as on Harley Davidson's, Ducati's and many recent Japanese motorcycles. This layout produces a twin cylinder motorcycle engine that is little or no wider than a single and narrower engine can be mounted lower in the frame with handling benefits a disadvantage of this configuration for air cooled engines is that the two cylinders receive different air flows and cooling of the rear cylinder tends to be restricted cooling problems are somewhat mitigated by having all four sides of each cylinder exposed to air flow. This differs from a parallel twin cylinder engine which has a distinct front, back, and sides but the inside of each cylinder is not exposed to airflow as the cylinders are typically joined together with a cam chain running up through the block in between the cylinders. Some transverse V-twins use a single carburetor in the middle of the V-angle to feed both cylinders. While this allows an economy of parts, it creates further cooling problems for the rear cylinder by placing its hot exhaust port and pipe at the back of the cylinder, where it may be exposed to less cooling airflow. Longitudinal Crankshaft Mounting The longitudinal crankshaft two-cylinder V as seen on Moto Guzzi's and some Hondas is less common. This orientation is suited to shaft drive, eliminating the need for a 90 degrees bevel gear at the transmission end of the shaft. A longitudinal crankshaft engine fits neatly into a typical motorcycle frame, leaving ample room for the transmission, and cooling is facilitated by cylinder heads and exhausts protruding into the airstream longitudinal crankshaft mounting is associated with a torque reaction that tends to twist the motorcycle to one side on sharp acceleration or when opening the throttle in neutral and in the opposite direction on sharp deceleration. Many modern motorcycle manufacturers correct for this effect by rotating flywheels or alternators in the opposite direction to that of the crankshaft. Thank you bye see in next video don't forgot to subscribe.